time does not finish. <laughs> Yes. Mr. Powers? Yep. Yes, this is Powers. You will follow instructions as agreed? Oh, yes. What are they? You will come to the southwest corner of Jackson and Carter at precisely midnight in your car. You will be met there and you will be given directions. What is the license number of your order, please? 3Y5989. Ah, very, very, very good. Now, one more matter. You will have with you the agreed amount of money and small unmarked bills. You understand, of course, in a transaction such as this, we cannot accept your check. <laughs> in the interest of good citizenship and law enforcement, we present Crime Does Not Pay, based on the famous metro goldwyn Mayer series of short subjects. In just a moment, you'll hear Imported Headache, starring Joseph Gula. Crime Does Not Pay, starring Joseph Uloff as Walter Dryden in Imported Headache. Most crimes are a cross between a jigsaw puzzle and a piece of tangled cord. The criminal must fit all the pieces of his crime together in the planning period, and the police must untangle the skein of cord from whatever single loose end they may discover. The perfect example of this is Walter Dryben, a German of Nazi extraction, one might say. Walter was thorough in his planning, perhaps a little too thorough for the tastes of his hoodlum assistants, Harry Sugsmith and Bob Lake. All right, Harry, stop here. Okay, if you say so, boss. I have said so. Ain't nothing around here but an empty road, boss. I will do the thinking. You will execute. That is the arrangement. Sure, sure. Okay, but maybe we'd like to know how this fits together. Yeah. First, we all go to drugstores and uh, buy 10-cent bottles of aspirin. Then you send Jersey to swipe a couple of cops' uniforms from a costume place. What's aspirin got to do with cops' outfits? Yeah, I don't get it either, boss. And if tonight we hijack a truck, I mean... It is what? not necessary for you to know. The less you know, the better. Well, you, you could tell us something, boss. Very, very well, then. I will tell you this much. I'm subject to headaches, so you buy for me the aspirin. <laughs> and I think about the J.C. will be very handsome policeman. As for the truck, I have a deal in mind. To do this business, a truck is necessary, so we take one. In fact, we take the one now coming around the curve. Americans own too many trucks. So now one American will own one less truck, and we will make money. Money, Harry. Block the road. Right. What if he don't see us? He sees us. He stops now. Harry, stay at the wheel. Pop and I will take care of this. I understand, Pop, you have had some experience driving trucks. Yeah, I used to. Hey, get that tire to lobby out of the road. We cannot for the moment. You will be patient, please. You want a hand shovel? Aha! It will be a pleasure to accept your assistance. Okay. What's the matter? The engine got dead on you? Well, that engine's okay. It sounds like a watch. All right, Bob. As you say, mop him. Hey, what the hell? There we are. Now then, push this so powerful young American into the ditch. On his face, I would prefer to. You know, boss, sometimes I think you rub it in just a little bit too much. You think with what? Now then, Bob, you will drive the truck. I will ride with Harry. You will follow us at approximately 40 yards and will follow the signals on the back of the car for turns. <laughs> 
Now we have a truck. We have aspirin, and we have uniforms. We are ready. From now on, you will see why they call me Walter Ice White Dragon. <laughs> One, two, three, and we will have money. Money, Harry. <laughs> for me, Miss Gould, and have the shipping room check the orders from Golden Drugs and Madsen Stores. Now then, Mr. Dryben. We have a proposition, Mr. Powers. A proposition dealing with aspirin. Excellent aspirin. Direct from the manufacturer in Germany. Oh, no. Real German aspirin? Made by the original manufacturer. Now back in business. Well, uh, import duty on that stuff's pretty high. There has been no duty paid on this shipment. You see, I have connections in Germany. Well, then how did you get it in? Oh, I understand. I'm not sure I care to do business with you, Mr. Dryben. No one except the three of us and the driver of my truck needs to know that this shipment was duty-free. Hmm. Keep talking, Mr. Dryben. You will have quite a shipment for your regular customers at a cost to you of approximately 30 cents on the dollar. Um, how do I know the product is certified pure? A sample, Mr. Powers. Uh, the label's authentic enough. The contents will stand analysis, Mr. Powers. All right. As long as the stuff is pure, why not? I'll buy as much as you have. A truckload, Mr. Powers. A trailer truck, sir. Well, now, that's a lot of aspirin. What's the price? I will notify you when the shipment is ready. You will, of course, accept my inventory. <laughs> I have to, I guess. Very, very well. In a few days, I will call you, and at that time, I will advise you where delivery will be made and how much the shipment will cost you. <laughs> Yes? Mr. Powers? Yep? Well, this is Powers. You will follow instructions as agreed? Oh, yes. What are they? You will come to the southwest corner of Jackson and Carter at precisely midnight in your car. You will be met there and you will be given directions. What is the license number of your auto, please? 3 y five nine eight nine. Ah, very, very well. <laughs> One more matter. You will have the agreed amount of money in small, unmarked bills. You understand, of course, in a transaction such as this, we cannot accept your check. <laughs> yes, I understand. One thing, we haven't yet agreed on how much. Now, you said that... Uh... Ah, yes, yes, yes. Excuse me, excuse me, of course. <laughs> the prize is $5,000. That's a lot of aspirin. I'm given to understand Americans have a lot of headaches. <laughs> Ah, Mr. Powers, good evening. Or is it good morning, to be precise? Morning, driver. And your associate takes no chances. He blindfolded me at Carter and Jackson, wouldn't let me take the darn thing off until we were just outside this place. Harry is very thorough. Yes. <laughs> he learned that from me. Ah, but Harry, you did not make Mr. Powers any more uncomfortable. That was absolutely necessary. Oh, no, boss. Of course not. Ah, very good, very good. <laughs> My apologies for any inconveniences, Mr. Powers. But these precautions are necessary. You see, there have been cases of men reneging on a transaction and causing much trouble. Oh, don't worry about that. I'm in this almost as deeply as you are. Oh, yes, yes, that is so, that is so. Uh, this is the truck? A large one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Full load? You doubt it? Harry, open the truck. Right, boss. Well, now, look, you don't have to go to all this trouble for me. My word has been doubted. Now you must have proof. It's open, boss. Select a carton, Harry. Any carton. Mm, you sure got it packed to the roof. How's, uh, how's this one, boss? Very good. Open the carton. Check. 
I don't see any custom house stamps on this carton, Reverend. <laughs> no? <laughs> but you will see inside the carton. Well, so. Uh, that's the stuff, all right. Very well, then. Harry, put back the carton and close the truck. Check, boss. And now, Powers, the money, if you please. Here? Why not at my warehouse? I deliver to you here. I accept no responsibility for delivery, except to permit my man to drive the truck. I must be paid now. All right. And you insist? I insist. Here you are. Five thousand. Nothing larger than a twenty. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Well, don't you want to count it? I take your word, Mr. Powers. Come. Harry will drive. We will follow in your car. Well, now, don't you want the address of my warehouse? But we know that already, Mr. Powers. Oh. Walter Dryden is very thorough. He always knows all about his customers before he begins to do the business with them. <laughs> American roads are efficient, Mr. Powers. Not, of course, as well planned as our autobahn, but efficient nevertheless. <laughs> as an exponent of the nation where efficiency is a household god, I, I'll take that as a compliment, Reverend. You may say so. <laughs> Quick, the brakes, the truck is slowing down. Huh? What's going on up there? Patience, Mr. Powers. No doubt we shall know it in a moment. Oh, what? Why should we have to stop on this road at this hour? In our headlights. Driving. Driving. Those are cops. Come on. Wait a minute here. Hurry up now. Make it snappy. Let's see what's in that truck. Okay, officer. Going as fast as I can. I ain't no machine, you know. Ah, civil tongue in your head. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, officer, well, what's the meaning of this? Uh, who are you? Well, that's my car. Open the carton here. Aspirin, the imported, no custom house stamp. This is the load, Joe. What load, if I may ask, officer? These roads have all been posted. We're watching for a load of smuggled aspirin. And this is it. You'll have to come with us, all of you. Now, tell me, officers, is it possible there might be some way to, well, smooth this small difficulty? What are you driving at, Bob? One truck, more or less. Who would know? Sounds like attempting to bribe an officer to me. Driven, please. Perhaps you'd better not to leave this to me. How much more money do I have on you? Uh, about a thousand. Maybe a little more. Very well. Gentlemen, if I may suggest it, a wallet found on the road. With, with say, two thousand dollars in it. Just found there, over there. <laughs> After we have driven off. This could not be construed as a bribe. Well, uh, could be... Yeah. Could be. Thank you, John. Close up the van, Harry. Drive on slowly. Mr. Powers, I will put up a thousand if you will. No further trouble. Well, if I have any trouble, I, I could lose my license. Okay. Well, there's mine. And mine. In this wallet. And so on the road. Let us go, Mr. Powers, before these five gentlemen change their minds. Best thousand bucks I ever spent in my life. <laughs> How'd you like that, Bob? Slick that guy, Wallace. Slick as oil. <laughs> <laughs> and that sucker, Powers. Yeah, Jesse, but he's been thinking beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Six thousand bucks for a phony bribe and a stolen truck. A stolen truck loaded with one carton of drugstore bought aspirin and the rest empty as a sucker's in. <laughs> Jesse, my boy, I'd wear a cop's outfit for Walter driving any day. But what's going to be our share of this little job? <laughs> <laughs> In just a moment, Crime Does Not Pay will continue with Imported Headache. Now, 
Before we continue with Crime Does Not Pay, starring Joseph Uloff as Walter Dryden in Imported Headache. <laughs> The jigsaw puzzle was complete. One truck, one carton of aspirin, one buyer eager for a special bargain, two imitation policemen. Total take, $6,000. There was great glee at Walter Driven's headquarters <laughs> later that eventful morning. <laughs> hey, fellas, do I make a good cop or do I make a good cop? Keep a civil tongue in your head, bub. <laughs> all right, all right, men. Now this here is business. Our first split, as you say in America. And uh, what do they say in Dutchland, boy? <laughs> in the fatherland, we do not waste time on idle laughter. Now then, I have here $6,000 in American money. That much he likes about America. Now, enough of this nonsense. As agreed, I receive half. The remainder is divided equally among the three of you. Therefore, 3000 to me. One thousand to each of you. Hey, thanks, boy. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Me too. That's the easiest grant I ever picked up in my life. Yeah. Easy. Maybe too easy. How so, Harry? Well, suppose his Powers character talks. The good Mr. Powers will not talk. Americans never admit they're suckers. If they get mad enough? Nah, nonsense. nonsense. After all, what did he get for his six thousand dollars? One stone truck, one carton of aspirin, one release from imitation policemen? No, no, no. Our good friend will not talk. Look, Mr. Powers, you don't seem to realize the position you're in. All I know, Lieutenant, is that I... I bought something. I didn't get what I paid for, but I did have a... Well, valuable experience, period. I think you'd better talk, Mr. Powers. Lieutenant Gorister, I don't think I like your tone. You like our jail even less. On what charge? Possession of a stolen truck and then a pinch theft of that truck. Your arrest won't help your reputation any. And we can prove possession of that truck. Possession of stolen goods, in other words. So let's stop kidding, Powers. You have a duty as a citizen and you're going to do that duty. Uh, nobody likes to admit he's been a fool, Lieutenant. Not even to catch the man who made a fool of him? Order Dryburn has disappeared. Banished. Dryburn. Sounds German. Yes, plenty. Saber scar and all. Acts and talks like a real Nazi. About five feet ten, broad shoulders, brown hair and blue eyes. Behaves like a Prussian officer. Yes, that's a good description. Several agencies are interested in him, including the Immigration Service... Illegal entry? We have reason to believe so. Uh, this is a big country, Lieutenant. You'll never find him. Won't we? Look, Powers, you've finally given us an end of the cord. We've a neat mess to untangle, but with patience, I think we'll get him. Yeah. Sons wants to talk to you. Ah, so a big concern. I will talk. Walter Dryden here. How do you do, Mr. Carr? Well, thank you. Uh, Mr. Dryden, I, uh, I understand you have a lot of aspirin. I'm subject to headaches, Mr. Carr. Aspirin for sale cheap. How would you know that? It's my business to know things like this. Ah, I see. And you would like to engage in a transaction with me? If the price is right, yes, then the product. We're a very reputable concern, Mr. Driver. I know, I know. I've heard of you. Will you be good enough to call on us uh, with a sample? I shall be delighted, Mr. Carr. Tomorrow, let us say, at 11 o'clock. I'll be expecting you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Carr. <laughs> <laughs> the fish are biting. What you use for bait? Ah, let it be known in certain quarters that bargains are, shall we say, obtainable at a price. <laughs> well, now, let us start our proceedings. 
It will be necessary, as usual, to find the suitable truck. Car speaking. Driving here. Tomorrow night. What time? Where? Midnight. Seaford and West Fillmore. Very well. And have the money with you in small unmarked bills. Understand? So this is your warehouse, Driven. And this is the truck, Mr. Carr. Packed completely, floor to roof, with the product you're paying for. May I see some of it, please? Oh. Harry, open a carton for Mr. Carr. Check. Harry is the driver of the truck. He will present us to your warehouse. There you are, Mr. Carr. Genuine imported aspirin. Well, I see. All right, Driven, let's get going. Driven, I must admit I admire your enterprise. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Uh, for some reason, I have the impression that you haven't been in our country very long. No, not too long. <laughs> you certainly have caught on to our ways, or uh, seem to have. It is an ancient expression. Do as the runners. <laughs> to which I add, America is the land of golden opportunity. Quite golden. <laughs> uh, for all of us in a deal like this. <laughs> you do so. I, I suppose it's none of my business, but I would like to know. How did you happen to come to America? Mr. Carr, when one sees opportunity die in one's fatherland, one seeks success in other places. I came here. There was a small, as you say, nest egg, which I successfully had placed here before the war against just such a contingency. Quite simple. My admiration increases as you speak. Go on. As for my entry through the golden portals, that was accomplished. <laughs> now let us leave it at that. In other words, it's uh, none of my business. Slow down, Sakar. Harry's flashing the lights on the truck. Uh, so I notice. Something wrong up there? Perhaps an accident along the road. It is well to stop for such things. We'll know before very long. All right, Bob, open up the truck. We want to see what you got in there. Okay, officer, of course. Smoke, cop. But let's see what's up, driving. But of course. Yeah, this is the stuff, all right. Yeah, uh, aspirin and no custom house stamp. Uh, these fellas with you, Bob? Look, I just drive a truck. I don't ask no questions. I'm working for it. Which one I'm of you owns this truck? I, I, I do, officer. All right, let's see the registration. Uh, don't you think, gentlemen, we can talk this over? If all you gentlemen will remain where you are, and the headlights of my car and Lieutenant Collins's... The sucker's got a gun! Hey, he's no sucker, he's a cop! Why, right, the work are all four of them. Right, Lieutenant, including our nasty friend here with his contempt for the efficiency of America. So, a government spy, a trap! Why not? You should know about these things, Dryben, known as Alex Tribal, wanted for war crime. No doubt about him, Collister. That saber scar would mark him any place. Hey, this... Hey, boss, for you and not me. This surprises you, Harry. Hey, look, Lieutenant, Mr. Carr, me and Bob and Jersey, we don't know anything except about the aspirin. We'll right? sing, we, Lieutenant. We we'll get you to work. Thanks, boys, but Investigator Matson here of the Immigration Service has plenty on your boss. Plenty. Mind if I take him directly, Lieutenant? Not at all. Well, then, with due thanks to your detective car, Walter Driven, alias Alex Tribal, you're under federal arrest, charged with illegal entry into the United States. I'm going to thank me. I do not thank at all. First, who will capture you? What's the hoodlums, Maxon? He wants the truck. All right, you three. Down. Down, Pat. Okay. No hurry, Collister. Watch. Truck starts slowly, Collister, but a bullet in the tire will ruin him every time. All right, let's dig him out of that cab, shall we? I doubt if he's hurt very much. And maybe that's too bad as far as Mr. Nazi Dryben is concerned. Fine does not pay. Joseph Buloff, who was starred as Walter Dryben in Imported Headache, will be back with you in just a moment. Mr. 
Now here in person is Joseph Buloff. Criminals like Walter Dryden operate their schemes on two points. They believe first that all Americans are ashamed to admit when they have been taken. Second, that most of us give in very easily to the temptation of an easy dollar, even though the business involved may be somewhat on the shady side. In fact, the success of much of our organized crime is based on exactly the same ideas. It follows, then, that when we ourselves wake up and cease to aid and abet this kind of criminal, however unconsciously we may be doing so now, we will have taken a long step toward removing the profit from crime of all kinds. It is up to us, ourselves, to make sure that at all times, in all ways, crime does not pay. Thank you, Mr. Buloff. Crime Does Not Pay is written by Ira Marion and directed by Marx B. Lowe with music composed and conducted by John Garth. Technical advisor is Burton B. Turkus. The events, characters, and names used in the story you've just heard are fictitious. Any similarity is purely coincidental. (laughs) 